In this video, we will be tackling the common problem of a horizontally launched projectile. The problem states an object is launched horizontally from a 35 meter cliff at a speed of 20 meters per second. When it reaches the ground, how far out from the base of the cliff will it have traveled? The first thing to do when working in any physics problem is to draw a diagram or draw a picture to help you visualize what's going on. So we have a cliff where we have an object that's launched horizontally. 20 meters per second, and we think it's going to follow some, it's told us it's a projectile problem, so it's going to follow some pra, parabolic path to the ground. And also tells us our cliff is 35 meters high. And it's asking us for how far out from the base of the cliff has this thing traveled. The second thing is to look at what physics equations are going to govern your situation? What model is going to work to help solve this problem? We know it's a projectile problem, so I've also included our projectile equations over here, which are the model that we're going to use to solve this problem. And I assume that it's on Earth, so that we can assume the acceleration due to gravity is negative 10 meters per second squared. Now, if we're looking at my diagram, we, we're given a few numbers here. It tells us that the cliff is 35 meters high. So what does that mean physically for our problem? Well, some of you might say, oh, that means that y equals 35. But you have to be a little bit careful. Because our cliff is 35 meters high, y is the end position, or we're solving for a point over here when the projectile gets to the ground. y is the position of the, of the projectile at that point over here. Now, if we assume like we have in the past that our starting position is our y equals 0, and we also assume that up is positive and to the right is positive. Our y is not 35, but this tells us that our y is going to be a negative 35, because this is going to end 35 meters below where it started. We can also see that the thing we're looking for in this problem is x. We're looking for the position in the x direction that this projectile hits the ground at. And there's one other trick to solving horizontally launched projectile problems. Usually in a problem, we're given initial velocity and an angle, and we can use trigonometry to figure out the initial x velocity and the initial y velocity. Here, we're only given a velocity. We're not given any angle. But if you think about it carefully, this is launched horizontally. So all the initial velocity is actually in the x direction, and none of it is in the y direction. So we can say that our initial velocity in the x direction is 20 meters per second. And our initial velocity in the y direction is actually zero, which we'll see makes this problem a lot, lot easier. Now I think we analyze the problem as much as we can. We know what we're looking for. We're looking for x. We know what we have. We know y. We know the initial y velocity and the initial x velocity. Now it's just going through using our three tools, which are our three equations over here, to try to solve this problem. If you're new to these problems, and you can't figure out where to start, just start by going through each equation and seeing if you know enough to get something new. For example, if you look at the x equation, I know the initial x position if it starts at 0. I know the initial x velocity. I don't know the time, and I don't know the position in the x direction. So I have two unknowns in this equation, so I can't use it yet. If I look at the y equation, though, I know the initial y position. I know the initial y velocity. I know the, I don't know the time, I know what a half is, I know the acceleration due to gravity, I don't know what the time it takes, how long it takes to get to the end, but that's the same variable as the other time, and I do know its end position. I know that at the end, it's 35 meters below where it started. So in the y equation, I know every variable except for time, which means I can use this equation to solve for something. So I'm going to start with the y equation. Y is going to be negative 35 meters equals the initial y position is 0, so I'll leave that out. The initial y velocity is 0, so this whole term also goes away. And I have 1 half times negative 10 meters per second squared times t squared. Well, this is pretty straightforward to solve. 1 half of negative 10 is negative 5. If I divide both sides by negative 5, the negatives cancel out. I get 7. See, the meters will cancel out. 7 seconds squared equals t squared. If I square root both sides, I get the time it takes for this object to 
be launched and get all the way to the ground to fall the 35 meters is going to be about 2.65 seconds. Now luckily this is also, this object's been falling for 2.65 seconds, it's also been moving sideways for 2.65 seconds. So I've now solved for time, if I go back to my x equation, one of the unknowns is now known, I know what t is. So I can therefore use my x equation now. So my first step was using the y equation. My second step is going to be to use the x equation. Plugging what I know, I'm looking for x. Initial x position is zero, so this term goes away. My initial x velocity was 20 meters per second. And my object's been traveling for 2.65 seconds. If I do a little math, I get that this object has traveled along the ground only in the x direction about 53 meters. The projectile equations look a little bit complicated, especially if you don't like algebra too much, but as you'll see, it becomes pretty straightforward how you can use them together through the fact that even though they work independent from each other, any single point in time, there are x's, there is an x position, a y position, and in some other problems, we'll use some of the velocities as well, and you can use them back and forth. If you can figure out one little piece of information, like in this case, we figure out what its wider position was at the time we were looking for, we can then use that time and all of our other equations.